So hello everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope really that um, I will be able to share all my wonderful experience with this uh, virtual mobility grant, especially um, with uh, Remo Zotero library. So I will try to walk you through this uh, library as li librarian. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also, I would add that I'm working organizational psychologist from um, Department of Psychology, University of Belgrade. Uh, so uh, I also uh, had some uh, uh, thoughts and analysis regarding my field, uh, working organizational psychology. So uh, let's begin. Um, first of all, uh, you can... Uh, uh, find uh, Remo Zotero library, library on this link. I could uh, give this link uh, in a chat when I finish uh, the presentation. Uh, I will do this right now. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I strongly suggest you to, to use this uh, uh, library because it's a really a good source of um, evidence uh, regarding researchers' mental health and mental health in general, so so and it it is free uh, free for uh, for use. Um, if you haven't uh, used um, Zotero software before, uh, I also would like to suggest uh, suggest you to. Um, install it because it is a really valuable software. It is free for use and you can um, use it to sort your literature uh, in a very easy and approachable way. Um, uh, regarding, uh, you, you can, for example, search uh, all materials that you store there by title, by creator, by year and by keywords and it's really a good thing to do if you're preparing a research article or some project. Um, also uh, regarding uh, Remo Zotero library, uh, I will uh, walk you through uh, some uh, structural technical aspects and also uh, I will talk about the content uh, of the library. Uh, you will find there uh, now we have some something like 321 or two um, uh, items there. Uh, they are sorted um, in folders. Some of the items are not, um, uh, and perhaps, are, perhaps are not sorted uh, within uh, these folders, but these folders could help you um, to, to go through the library and to easily find uh, some, some um, interesting articles. Uh, I suggest that here in a presentation you can, you can browse the library for mental health uh, uh, researchers mental health term but it's actually um, it's actually uh, th th this um, this word is not uh, quite used in in articles uh, regarding uh, researchers mental health because uh, usually you will find their research about burnout about um, engagement about and so on but they do not um, label uh, th these uh, research as as mental health so uh, if you try to search by this wor word you will find for example 70 uh, articles <laughs> that uh, that actually have in their title uh, mental health uh, once when I started to analyze uh, this library, uh, library had uh, 242 items. 80% uh, of these items were directly related to the topic. And when I said related, we also had some unrelated one, uh, but to uh, these ones are related to mental health in general, for example, workplace bullying, uh, mental health of graduate students, uh, and uh, I strongly suggest you to consider also uh, these, these articles because uh, uh, they could really be um, inspirational. Also, 50% uh, of uh, those that, I, that are directly related to the topic offer some practical solution. 
which uh, solutions be and it, it's really uh, great news because you will find there descriptions of interventions, programs, policy materials, and so on. Uh, also, I strongly suggest you to give them some sneak peek because it could uh, help you a lot and you uh, do not need to uh, start from the scratch if you're thinking um, about some intervention program and uh, and so on. Um, I was wondering when I was uh, analyzing uh, library material, uh, uh, when did this topic start trending and uh, what is our oldest uh, article in the library? And I found uh, this one from 2000, uh, Winfield and Jared, Occupational Stress in University Stuff, International Journal of Stress Management. Uh, this study is about uh, Australian university staff, 2,040 participants, and it is a quantitative study. It is interesting to dig um, in order to find the motives for, for this study. And the main motive was that uh, in this period, Australian universities have abandoned tenure contract. So um, when this happened, uh, it obviously uh, started to, uh, this topic started to be inspirational for, uh, for researchers. Uh, so when you change working conditions, mental health uh, uh, could be endangered. Uh, so uh, then I, I started also to search uh, further and I found some articles from 2004, 2008, and eight, uh, but uh, these articles were sporadic. Um, till 2012, uh, I, I uh, found uh, more articles that are matched with this year. And then uh, a trend skyrocketed in 2018. I was thinking about this year, 2012, and um, uh, what came to my mind, maybe the fact that financial crisis uh, uh, took it toll or uh, something else happened. But for example, uh, what happened this year, 2018, I, I do not know, but from this year we have uh, lots, uh, lots of articles. And uh, I must, uh, highlight that the uh, majorly newspaper articles and survey uh, survey reports. Uh, of course, uh, I was wondering uh, whether we have uh, some um, older articles regarding this topic and I found this one from 1986 and I included it in the library. Um, a dimension of stress among university faculty uh, it is um, from USA, uh, and uh, this study also uh, included uh, nearly uh, 2,000 uh, professors. Uh, what is interesting, I was also wondering <laughs> what, what were the motives for, for this research, and I found these uh, two sentences uh, that are really quite... Um, colorful <laughs> to depict uh, the motives for, for, for the study. Uh, and the uh, author said, um, we as academicians and researchers willingly study other groups, yet we seldom take time to look at our own profession. John Gardner once uh, commented that professors are to education as goldfish are to water. They swim in it, but never think to study it. Uh, it's interesting. It was interesting to me as working organizational psychologists because I think that uh, the same thing goes uh, for us. We, we are studying uh, so many different organizational contexts, but uh, we are we are not thinking about uh, our profession uh, as frequent as we think about uh, some some other uh, professions. And so uh, it, it was really a good starting point uh, for 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 this one. Um, also, I found the article from 1972. I uh, have also included it uh, in the in, um, library. And uh, this article uh, is um, uh, 
um, review study and uh, Professor Schall uh, also uh, described uh, his own experience uh, with some problems that he faced uh, at, at his university. Uh, so, I'm sorry, oh, something happened, okay. Uh, uh, motives for, for this review article uh, was the fact that uh, uh, in that period professors uh, started to lose their comfort uh, and um, he said something that um, they needed to exit from the ivory tower and to offer some um, uh, attractive programs to uh, undergraduates from different uh, cultural and national settings and to uh, become consultants for um, for for different uh, industries also he mentioned mentioned uh, multiple roles they should juggle role constraints imposed control um, and self-control because uh, he, he wrote uh, something like that people who, who start their career in academia expect to have um, freedom, to have comfort, to study a lot, but it seems that uh, uh, they also have some imposed control. Uh, also overload. Uh, increased academic duties. So if we now are thinking that we have lots of problems, many of, of these problems are actually were actually recognized um, earlier earlier in, in USA in 1972. Uh, um, anyhow, I added these two articles in the library so you can find them if you're if you uh, love history as much as I do. So um, uh, you, you can you can read it uh, really um, and, and enjoy it. Enjoy them. Um, uh, regarding our uh, Remo library, in our library you will find the articles dealing uh, dealing with problems of researchers from Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland. France, Germany, Netherlands, Norway, South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, um, I'm sorry, UK and United States. Uh, there uh, are some reports and articles uh, in which um, uh, you will find the fact that researchers uh, used some uh, sampling procedures in, in which they uh, gave, for example, link toward questionnaire to some large community of PhD students or researchers, and you can't um, guess their cultural background, nationality, and so on. So uh, th this list could be even larger, but you can't see it clearly uh, from, from, from the report. Uh, I, I was wondering why these countries, and, and there is um, one thing to add. Uh, for, for example, from Czech Republic, from Croatia, from Turkey, um, we have for example, two or three studies. Uh, in, 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 this is the list uh, all, of all countries that I could find. Maybe I skipped something, uh, but their their frequency is not um, equal. Uh, so, so I was wondering why these countries. Uh, maybe in these countries um, they have competitive research environment, more competitive research environment. Uh, maybe they are the most ready to make some changes uh, regarding um, researchers' practice. And uh, maybe they have the largest and the most diverse research community and uh, PhD programs. The, the, these questions are, are just uh, my hypothesis. <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure uh, why we miss some data from, from some countries. Uh, also, uh, I was wondering uh, where to find uh, the uh, material regard, uh, regarding uh, researchers' me mental health. Uh, and I um, made a list um, of uh, journals 
in you in which you can find the, uh, this topic. Uh, I will not read it, read this list to you. Um, I will just let you uh, see it. I have three slides with with this list, and uh, maybe you will notice that um, uh, uh, regarding this topic, you will find um, uh, you, you will find articles in journals that are related to higher education. It, it, that are very specialized. Uh, also, you will find in educational journals, um, in working organizational psychology journals, and in some general ones. But it seems that this topic um, did not uh, did did not embed in any any particular field. Uh, so it's 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 a bit um, scattered. So, so this is this is the list of uh, journals in which you can find uh, uh, articles related to mental health of researchers. Uh, so, so I presume that. Um, uh, so I, I presume that you had time to uh, to look at at them. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, where else uh, you can find the uh, the articles regarding this topic? Uh, you can find it in science and nature blogs and. Uh, I think that these blogs are very inspirational because you will find there some concepts and some fresh thoughts from researchers and their ongoing problems. And I think really that uh, uh, you will be able to generate some, some interesting uh, uh, new hypotheses. For example, the courage to leave, I'll work on it over the weekend. Uh, whether uh, PhD leads to enjoyable jobs or um, research is set up for bullies to thrive. I'm sorry, I, my PhD thesis was about workplace bullying, so uh, naturally I was attracted to, to this topic, but you can find there many other uh, interesting, um, in, in, interesting titles. Um, I think that uh, these blogs are really good starting point in search for some fresh ideas or highly uh, relevant topics. Um, this was some titles that I found very interesting, dealing with bullies and jerks in science. Uh, researchers pay the cost of research. Uh, how I tackle po post-PhD imposter syndrome and so on. Um, so uh, the first part was about uh, some. I'm sorry. Um, uh, so so the, the first part was a, tech, a bit technical one, and the second one um, I would like to um, give you some some of my insights about the content um, and uh, to give you a few words about the, the, the content uh, of material that I saw and the uh, trends. Uh, of course, um, my questions when I was analyzing the literatures, the literature were, uh, for example, how is researchers' mental health defined? Um, also, what are the indicators of researchers' mental health and uh, which theories for, uh, form a backbone of um, all uh, research? And uh, regarding the first question, uh, I found uh, these two definitions. One is about mental health and another one is... Uh, uh, about well-being, and uh, I uh, I wanted to estimate uh, uh, 
which one is more suitable to depict um, all articles uh, that I saw. Uh, the first one is um, definition from World Health Organization. And it is said that mental health is a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stress of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. The second one is about well-being and the um, factors that uh, made uh, well-being. Uh, for example, uh, the various life non-work uh, satisfactions enjoyed by individuals like satisfaction or dissatisfaction with social life, family life, recreation, spirituality, and so on, uh, work or, or job-related satisfaction, satisfactions as satisfaction and or dissatisfaction with pay, promotion opportunities, the job itself, co-workers, and so forth, and general health. Um, my... Um, estimation is that actually many articles um, and, and many research topics could fell under this second one uh, definition because um, usually you will find in articles um, these factors that uh, uh, um, make well-being. Uh, also, there, there, is, uh, there are some articles uh, regarding uh, engagement, uh, well-being in general, so on. Uh, but um, also you will find uh, the ones that, that really tackles this, uh, these factors that um, uh, make uh, oh, well-being. Uh, I was also wondering uh, what uh, else do we need in, in these articles? And I was thinking about the context, context uh, because um, uh, somehow context is not uh, highlighted enough, in my opinion. And I found this definition of healthy workplaces, uh, which I feel that uh, should be also studied. Uh, so you will find here a uh, definition of healthy workplaces. Um, these workplaces are those one in which workers are treated um, uh, with respect and organizational members engage in activities that foster the psychological and physical health. Uh, these workplaces are dedicated to promoting and supporting the physical and psychological health and well-being of their employees while simultaneously incorporating solid uh, business practices to remain as an efficient and productive business entity and having a positive impact on their clients and community. I think that uh, th this definition and these factors should be or could be uh, very inspirational both for, um, for researchers and the ones who um, want to uh, deal with, with policies. Um, I'm sorry. Mm. My presentations. Aha, okay. Um, uh, also, uh, I uh, made a list of some um, interesting concepts uh, that were mentioned in articles. Um, and I also <laughs> made a very large uh, list of them. Uh, I also think that uh, these concepts uh, could be uh, quite inspirational for, um, for future studies, uh, like uh, you will find in some articles, uh, maladaptive and adaptive perfectionism, mentorship, professional identity, abusive supervision, academic bullying, bounded ethicality or, or ethical blind spots, whether we see something as ethical or, uh, or not ethical, uh, and whether this is um, related to, to, to some uh, group dynamic. Also power abuse, uh, psychological hardiness, uh, facades of conformity, uh, false representations uh, that we have about uh, different people, social connectedness, 
equality, diversity and inclusion prototypes of ideal academic. This topic is really uh, interesting in context of gender, for example. Also, mentor support and emotional labor. Uh, and then I found uh, these concepts, uh, hyper-competitive culture, a transi transition from being a team member to, to a team leader, career transitions, disillusions, especially uh, when it comes to PhD students. Uh, also, this concept of school work-life balance uh, for PhD students or for everyone who um, actually study uh, while, they're, while they work. Uh, also, new man manageralism in academia, I'm sorry. Um, mental health literacy, multiple dependencies in academia, isolation academic excellence as inherently gendered. And uh, final ones, uh, sharing vulnerability, courage to leave, the challenges of pandemic, inclusive science, kindness in science, uh, value of PhD inside and outside of academia. This is uh, a very, uh, a very, a very interesting question uh, for uh, every PhD student. Uh, whistleblowing, transparency, and imposter syndromes. Um, the, these concepts are also um, the ones that are not uh, quite um, analyzed, and you can use it in your research or in your thoughts about uh, uh, future uh, research. Uh, my my. Third question uh, was um, um, whether I can find some theories and concepts that could be uh, offered as uh, some possible framework and uh, for future research. And I found uh, also some theories that are mentioned in articles. Uh, the first one that I found uh, was uh, the theory of reasoned action from Fishbein and Eisen. Uh, there you will find in, in this um, research framework, um, um, they study attitudes and norms that uh, form, form our behavioral intentions and the relationship between attitudes and uh, behaviors with human action. Uh, also, um, uh, there are uh, uh, there are lots of articles regarding uh, career insecurity in the co context of boundaryless career and protean career. Uh, so regarding regarding boundaryless career, uh, it's it is a concept that uh, says that workers can move across boundaries between employers uh, and uh, work units. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether this concept is good or bad for researchers. Um, uh, also, protean career is about frequent change and self-invention, self-management. Um, as I said, I, I'm not quite sure whether these concepts are really a preferable one uh, when uh, it comes to career of researchers. Um, maybe researchers prefer I worry tower career or um, traditional career uh, because uh, I think that this career could also uh, lead to some additional stress and uh, burnout. Uh, also, I found self-determination theory uh, that uh, was mentioned in, in many articles. Uh, it deals with uh, basic need, uh, need satisfaction. Um, these basic needs are autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And regarding autonomy, again, uh, also I'm not quite sure uh, whether and to what extent having autonomy is uh, uh, good or bad uh, for um, a researcher's mental health. Uh, here you will you will find some additional. Um, theories and uh, that, that could help you um, to, to um, uh, structure your uh, research questions. Um, for example, job demands resources theory, 
uh, that uh, depicts interplay between organizational demands and organizational and personal uh, resources. This theory is also, um, let's just say, good avenue for um, interventions for for making uh, for making interventions regarding regarding researchers' mental health. Uh, also, you will find in uh, in the library um, many titles regarding burnout, and in the context of burnout, you have this conservation of resources theory. Um, uh, which is actually about uh, asking ourselves and others uh, which resources do we use and how we replenish them uh, at, at the end of our working day. Uh, also, I found social exchange theory uh, that is about uh, evaluating costs and rewards of a relationship and empowering a leadership theory. Uh, it's interesting, th this concept is um, um, maybe more suitable for an um, academic environment because it is about sharing pow power, not just a trans uh, transitional, transactional leadership, but uh, mm, uh, how, how we should and could uh, share, share our power in an uh, equally competent uh, team. Uh, uh, regarding some possible gaps in, in the literature, uh, as I said, all above mentioned concepts are still under development. Uh, many of them are raised as concerns in newspaper paper articles, so you can use them freely uh, in your research and uh, you will not be you 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 can be probably the only one who started to to uh, thoroughly analyze some of them uh, also uh, regarding theoretical embeddedness of phenomena um, uh, i think that uh, in in articles you will not find um, the map of all possible theories that could uh, grasp the phenomenon so uh, there is um, uh, there is a lot, a lot of room for uh, for doing such a uh, thing. I think I was wondering, for example, uh, whether career development theories uh, could help in um, understanding of uh, uh, researchers' mental health. For example, studying different career paths, development stages of researchers, and uh, implications of different developmental tasks on mental health of researchers nature of career choice also. Uh, naturally, I, I'm attracted to this topic, workplace bullying in academia. Uh, I haven't found uh, any article that tackle this topic, a topic in context of effective events theory. This theory is about relations between some workplace events with effective reactions. And I think that this theory also could be of a help. Uh, also, regarding PhD students, maybe uh, the topic of psychological contract uh, could be uh, interesting. And in general, uh, uh, you, will uh, you will find there um, many studies that tackle PhD students. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Maybe uh, this sample is uh, uh, more approachable. Uh, but definitely it would be interesting to um, uh, uh, to research mental health in an academic institution as a whole. So I think that it would be uh, great to include graduated students, maybe also their parents um, and, and, and uh, the, their near environment, PhD students, senior researchers, university teachers, staff services, technicians, you, you won't find uh, many uh, studies regard, uh, that include uh, staff services and technicians uh, in their sample, also management. Um, regarding uh, PhD students and, for example, se senior researchers, I'm not quite sure uh, for example, whether motives for dropping out from, from studies are the same as dropping out from workplace in 
which you are for 10 or 15 years. I'm not quite sure whether this dropout of PhD students is more um, uh, more like uh, dropping out of graduate students. Maybe it's not only about some uh, problems uh, with um, their working environment, but maybe rather uh, the fact they uh, can't find themselves in the topic of their PhD studies, or uh, maybe they want to change their professions because uh, something other uh, uh, came up. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, I think that really it would be helpful to study mental health uh, in an academic institution as, as a whole. Uh, and finally, I will tackle uh, this issue regarding um, how literature is sorted. Uh, because uh, I mentioned to you at the beginning that we have some folders and that some of, of our literature is uh, um, sorted in, in, in these folders. Uh, so I'll quickly uh, go uh, through them. Uh, you will find 11 or 12 folders, I think 12 folders. Um, you have uh, this folder, research articles and books related to topic. Uh, you will find there all journals, um, all manuscripts and books dealing with mental health uh, of uh, researchers. Also, you have this one, uh, survey reports related to topic. Uh, those surveys are usually financed by some large national funds, relevant institutions, universities, civil sector organizations. Uh, also, you can find their review articles uh, related to topic, uh, review articles uh, published in scientific uh, journals. Uh, this folder, magazine articles, blogs uh, related to topic, they are really inspirational. You, you will find their uh, really striking reports, views, commentaries that have caught the public interest. So it could be a really good source for um, generating some uh, new hypotheses. Uh, also, uh, you have uh, here this folder, inspirational articles and materials. Uh, there you will find uh, journal manuscripts not related to the topic of researchers' mental health, but containing some inspirational ideas and concepts that could ignite future uh, research. Also in the library, you can find Remo materials, all the relevant presentation, ma presentations, materials, linked to our YouTube channel campaigns and webinars. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, what else? Uh, you can find folder about COVID-19 and the researcher mental health. Uh, there you can find uh, all relevant materials related to current pandemic and researchers mental health. Um, this folder, uh, cultural diversity, was uh, very difficult to put together uh, because uh, there you will find some articles, reports, materials, materials related to research and mental health from different cultural contexts. Uh, but uh, uh, there you, you, you won't find as many articles as you can ex expect. Uh, also, um, this folder uh, would be of a help. Uh, and this folder needs more resources, mental health resources for researchers. The idea was to find some resources where researchers could find uh, support and help if they need. Uh, also, this folder policy impact is also <laughs> need, need, need your, your help. We are searching for ways to support policy development related to research and mental health. Um, also, this folder, some practical solutions. Um, uh, it, it is really interesting one. As I said, there is no need to st start from the scratch. We have already some uh, practical solutions and interventions uh, that are uh, at, at our disposal. And if you have some more ideas, please uh, let us know. Uh, you you can suggest uh, the reference via our Remo Slack uh, channel, or you can send us an email. Uh, 
and yes, I strongly suggest you to to do so if you if you have some some ideas because uh, we really really need uh, uh, that our li library is uh, um, uh, full of e evidence based uh, re regarding uh, research on mental health. Um, I I haven't. Uh, uh, said uh, why I use this uh, through the uh, library looking glass. <laughs> I felt a bit like Alice. I must confess when I started to, to analyze uh, all these materials, uh, my first uh, association was uh, this Alice cat, uh, Cheshire cat, <laughs> because uh, I thought that I will find only one uh, one path uh, that can lead lead me somewhere, but uh, actually no. Uh, I, I I found many paths and many ideas, and um, I I was um, uh, a bit confused. But uh, as it is said in the name of the rose from Umberto Eco, books are not made to be believed, but to be subjected uh, to to our inquiry. Uh, thank you so much. If you have any suggestions, you can find me here. This is my uh, email address. And uh, I need to, to say thank, thank you to Radenka, to Brian, to Stefan, to Ivana, to Sofia and to Maya. Um, uh, I, I had the great pleasure to discuss uh, my, my inquiry with with them and to um, I was offered also with some um, interesting insights from them and that really helped me um, in in um, making uh, this this presentation so thank you all